to some One Piece news that I believe came out roughly almost a week ago, if not more. But I wanted to touch up on it and also kind of get into discussion territory regarding what's going to go down in the future of One Piece. In particular with the Wano Kuni arc, the Wano Kingdom arc, going into what's going to go on there, how long it's going to take. We'll read a little bit of the interview. Again, I know probably tons of people touched up on it, but I also wanted to talk about the series itself. And when that art comes, what's going to be going down, what I personally feel is going to be going down, and a lot of things just in general surrounding the actual arc and the characters going into that arc. Now, in case you don't know, it's been foreshadowed for a while now, I mean even in the story, that the next arc after the Big Mom Whole Cake Island arc is going to be the Wano arc, which is, you know, dealing with Kaido and the samurai and a lot of really, really cool stuff. Honestly, I'm very, very excited for this because ever since I saw Kaido jumping from Sky Island, you know, Sky Pia, whatever, and falling down and surviving, been really excited for this man okay <laughs> just hearing him talk a little bit knowing of course that he's a yonko which knowing about the yonkos we've anticipated them for quite a long time you know what i'm saying getting big mom was like holy cow it took us forever but we're finally here and even though whole cake has lived up for the most part to the expectations of almost everybody like the fights have been great big mom has been if not more than what we expected i mean for crying out loud luffy really can't do anything to her himself and even her commanders luffy struggling against so whole cake has lived up to the hype and i can only imagine what wano and kaido is going to be in comparison when you look at them to me me and I think to a lot of people as well Kaido and his group are even stronger and a lot tougher than Big Mom for Big Mom to have said that thing like you know you, you can't even beat me you think you have a shot at that thing that speaks volumes about Kaido and it makes me think a lot of different things going into it now for starters I do truly believe and I think a lot of people would agree that it's going to take a lot more than even all the straw hats combined to take down Kaido and his crew. I truly believe if not all of the Dress Rosa people, then Kid, Apu, a lot of those people as well, it's going to take an entire army to take down Kaido and his crew. And even then, I wouldn't be surprised if honestly Kaido maybe surrenders if anything, but never truly is taken down. Because again, my expectations with Kaido is too high. I feel as though, again, with Big Mom, Luffy and the crew really couldn't do jack shit to her. I don't think that Kaido is touchable. I think that it's going to take some very unique strategy, whether it be like, you know, people like Blackbeard or whoever the case may be, jumping in and getting involved as well. But I don't see like the Straw Hats themselves as it stands right now, them alone being able to take on. And even having an entire army, I just don't see Kaido falling considering the fact the man jumped from the heavens where people died trying to get up there to Sky Pia just alone. Man jumped down and he was like, damn, still can't die. What, what's going on here? Although to be fair, I will say there probably is a couple chinks in his armor. I mean, if Shanks went at it with him and Shanks survived, right? Shanks didn't have any huge notable ligaments missing or anything like that. There probably is a way to fight Kaido. I mean, if Shanks got involved in the fight against Kaido alongside Luffy and them, then I think they definitely have a good shot at taking out Kaido. But I think there's a lot to go into it and I also think and maybe this is for a whole different video and we've talked about this multiple times a lot of people talked about this but Luffy in order to go one-on-one -on -one with Kaido considering the fact that he couldn't even go one-on-one -on -one with Big Mom we need another time skip and we talked about this in one of the One Piece reviews recently regarding the chapters or whatever. The two-year time skip that we had, you know, going from the ending of Marine Ford into the New World or even before Fishman Island. You know, the training that he had there was not going to be nowhere near enough. And, you know, it took me seeing a lot of what went down in Whole Cake Island in particular to see where Luffy is at. And then really remember that Luffy's training that he had that a lot of people thought, okay, it's, it's game time. There's no more or whatever you got to think a lot of the people that Luffy is going to go up against in the new world learn the shit that Luffy learned in those two years many years ago perfected what Luffy learned and then some so going into this if again Big Mom's crew and I hate to say it like this but Big Mom's crew to me is far below Kaido's crew as far as strength which I would love to have seen them go at it because I think aside from like a select few maybe a couple of Kaido's commanders would fall or whatever but like I, I think Kaido's team would demolish Big Mom's crew not with ease but I know Kaido probably would have bodied Big Mom on his own that, that's just my opinion but uh, it would nonetheless be an interesting thing to see but I think Kaido would have demolished her and 
And with all that being said, again, if Luffy is struggling against Big Mom, what shot that he, does he have against Kaido? So I do think that going into the Kaido arc, there's going to be multiple things. Either we're going to definitely need another time skip of Luffy because right now, even with Gear 4th, which Gear 4th can't do nothing against Big Mom, right? We saw he gave it all he had in one punch and Big Mom took it like nothing. So if that was the case, then on top of that, Gear 4th has a limit to it, which, you know, you be without hockey for a good 10 minutes. It's 10 or 15 minutes, something along the lines of that. So there's also a weakness to Gear 4th going into using, you know, the transformation or whatever. And if it wasn't enough against Big Mom, then he's pretty much just like a broken toy going up against Kaido, if that makes any sense at all. It's like he, he has no chance against Kaido as a right now again a big army of kid and luffy and his crew and maybe even blackbeard throwing everybody off in some craziness or whatever then maybe kaido can fall because blackbeard has the ability to you know steal devil fruits and shit like that he steals out even for a second that'll be enough to get kaido down or whatever and that's assuming that blackbeard would even you know be involved in that because we don't know exactly what went down in the fight with the blackbeard pirates against the revolutionary army so there's something there to take into account as well but i do see See, there's a huge possibility of another time skip in between Whole Cake Island and Wano. Now, we do know that Zoro and a lot of the other crew are, I believe, on their way to Wano. Or, if I'm not mistaken, they were either waiting for Luffy to get back from finishing off what's going on with Big Mom. Or, they were going to head there themselves. So, it's kind of going to be interesting to see how that's going to work out. Because, like, Luffy would have to give the message to them. Like, yo, we're not ready for Kaido. We need to wait another year or two or however long it takes. We need to chill back. But it also feels as though many years has passed. Like, I believe what we did the time skip in the One Piece manga back in, like, 2010. It feels as though in continuity in the world, it hasn't been that, that long since we had the time skip. So, going into another one, it kind of feel a little bit like you just went on a time skip. You know, what was going on here? So, there's that that you got to take into account as well regarding will there be another time skip this soon. I do think that we will have have a time skip at some given point i just don't know if it'll be this soon it's definitely needed in order to take down kaido for at the very least luffy because you got to think in order for luffy to become pirate king right you would assume that at the very least he has to be legend wise that he took down all of these behemoths these monsters or whatever so if luffy is leading the charge against kaido and they manage to take down kaido maybe that'll be enough for him to get like yo he led the charge and took down kaido yes this is going to be the pirate king right here so there's that possible as well let's jump into the interview and the information which again i'm sure a lot of you already know of this but let's take a look at it anyways oda says it will take another one to two years for one piece to enter wano arc he also says the wano arc will include an episode about ace so for starters we definitely have to assume that what he's referring to is in real time so like if this interview was conducted anywhere within 2017 then likely 2018 2019 because again there's been some contradictions with what some of his editors have said regarding when we're going to get into Wano I'm leaning towards mid to late 2018 is when we're going to actually get into Wano because again we don't know exactly when this interview was conducted if I'm not mistaken it's like kind of uh, back and forth when it was taken so I'm leaning towards mid to late 2018, which makes sense and kind of corroborates with what a lot of the other editors have said regarding when Wano is going to get started. Also, oh my gosh, thank you for getting info on Ace. Like, th that's going to be perfect. On top of the fact that, you know, Ace is a very popular character, this would be great to expand even further into Ace because we know about his childhood. We know a couple extra things. This will expand on some of his pirate life and a lot of other things that I would love to see regarding Ace. So, yes, more Ace. Hell yeah even though he's dead we're still getting cool shit then audience sometimes ask oda about foreshadowing via fan letters which makes him think oh my god i haven't mentioned it yet when audience asked him what are the names of this luffy move based on he searches it on the one piece fan site oda feels as though him and his audience are working together to create one piece kind of cool that you know the fans are somewhat involved oda came up with the idea of marine ford summit war long ago so that is great great to hear that one of the best arcs in one piece in my opinion anyway was thought up a long time ago and it makes sense when you pre-plan things things come out a lot better usually and uh yeah the war was set up a while before so oda knew what the hell he was doing going into that oda says it's hard to talk about justice through luffy's mouth since he's a pirate so oda just puts a simple conclusion that the opposite side of justice is another justice oda says that it's one of the main themes of one piece which is something that i always think to myself when i'm reading one piece is technically what luffy and the gang do usually like you know getting these people out of these jams like for example example with uh dress rosa they were like in a really bad situation and luffy kind 
kind of liberated them, but he's also a pirate at the same time. So it's kind of like that's not necessarily Luffy's complete intention of being this good guy. But at the end of the day, Luffy is a, a decent person. So there's levels, I guess, also in the One Piece world of how bad a pirate is. Luffy's ranking and his bounty goes up based on the shit that he does that interferes with the government or they can use against him. Because at the end of the day, you're a pirate no matter what the government ain't going to be with you. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily that Luffy is a bad guy, why, why his ranking goes up, especially see through all his actions. And it's always, again, interesting to me because, again, y you're pirates at the end of the day, right? But you're doing good things. But it's not necessarily that Luffy is trying to be some superhero. It's just, okay, we got to get through the situation. At the same time, I'm not a bad person. Uh, if we could liberate these people while we're getting to where we're trying to go, why the hell not? Oda says One Piece has many flashback scenes as opposed to traditional shonen manga, which didn't show much detailed backstories of characters. Oda thinks there's too many manga out there these days which handle flashbacks. I'm not sure I really understand what he's trying to say there. If he's trying to say that when he started doing the flashbacks that not many shonen did it but now they do it or the way he handles flashbacks is different that he really goes into detailed backgrounds on people opposed to like you know shonen manga aside from like the main characters that they show backstories to they don't really get that that involved. I'm not exactly sure what he's trying to say there because I mean take for example Naruto how many flashbacks we had with Naruto yeah. Oda's effort for One Piece is divided into drawings 40% and story 60% so he's mainly a story guy but not by that that much. Oda says the characteristics of islands in each arc are pretty different so that the audience doesn't get bored. He also says the personality of Luffy never changes. According to Oda now that the audience have fully grasped Luffy's personality they sometimes complain even when Oda intentionally let Luffy do something unlike him which is something i've talked about in other videos uh regarding the audience definitely always trying to have a stronghold on what goes on because they don't like that much change i love it when luffy does something that is not necessarily out of character but shows growth which i guess somewhat to some people may seem out of character like when luffy is like yo we're done running we're done it's like, okay, that, that's growth in Luffy. It may not be exactly like Luffy, but I personally enjoy that and I prefer that. So the audience not liking that is like, uh, it's for the story. Stop the whining. And also, without a question, that Oda makes sure almost every scenery and every background regarding, you know, the islands and stuff is very different. You go from, like, the gorgeous look of Fishman Island to, like, the crazy look of Dress Bro. So, like, he definitely puts a lot into the backgrounds. That's without question. Oda decided to make Luffy's design simple as possible as he could when he started One Piece since he thought the designs of other characters would gradually become more complicated. The fundamental of One Piece is that people help others desperately. Oda believes everyone loves this kind of story. At the end of the day, humans are good people, unless you're like a psychopath, so yeah, it is what it is. Oda already has the idea of how One Piece will end ever since the first chapter. According to another interview in 2012, Oda said the final arc will be so amazing, it will make Marine Ford look like nothing. I absolutely love hearing that Oda has the ending planned, which also makes me think that it's something not simple i mean it'll be very very detailed i'm sure when we get there but it's kind of like if you think about it it's something that he just thought okay this is in my head this is gonna happen what it means could range in a variety of things but when it comes to my mind I, I think of it as something so simple as either maybe a happy ending he he thought in the very beginning luffy's gonna have a family or it could be from the very beginning he thought luffy's dying and it's gonna end with luffy getting executed or in the very beginning he thought it's going to end with luffy standing with a flag and saying i'm the pirate king like there's so many possibilities but i can almost guarantee the thought in there is something very simplistic that'll be of course surrounded by multiple amounts of detail and all sorts of crazy stuff but i'm guessing what he means by the ending itself is that it's a very simple idea i'm guessing and i'm guessing that if you really thought about it we could probably obviously we wouldn't be able to nail it until we see the ending but it's probably something very simplistic again that'll be surrounded by so many crazy things going on like hey luffy dies at the end that's the ending or the straw hats get away and have a happy ending that's the ending and so yeah a lot of things coming out of that interview and again wano arc is going to be one to two years i'm predicting mid 2018 around there because whole cake is almost over as well Kind of curious what you guys think though do you think that luffy indeed needs a time skip right after whole cake in order to be able to stand up against kaido or you think it's just going to be a massive army and a rebellion against kaido and that's how they're going to be able to take him down and i mean again in comparison if big mom is too much for luffy and big mom talks of kaido as if he's just this monster what chances does luffy have against kaido and your thoughts on the interview and everything i would have said really interesting stuff again i know i'm late on it but i wanted to add some discussion in as well including of course talking about the interview but 
that's all I have for this one though. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked anything I had to say or enjoyed the video, drop me a like. I'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want more from me, make sure to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. And do a little stalking on my Facebook to get more when the video ends. I'm Fanab World, and as always, people, have an awesome day. And remember, anime and manga for life, boy. Have an awesome one.